Hi, it's Susan Arnold from Quilt Fabrication with a tutorial full of tips and tricks for fusible applique. All right, so the first thing in fusible applique is you want to make sure that you have a reverse printout of your pattern. That's what you're going to use to trace onto fusible web, the paper side, so that when you apply this to fabric and flip it over, this is going to be the right side of your fabric. So ultimately, my little guy here, he's going to be looking to the left. I like to use uh, Pellon Wonder Under. I find it's kind of easy to obtain. It works great, but you can choose any fusible that you like. Once I'm done with my tracing, I'm going to do a rough cut of a quarter inch away from my drawn line all the way around my design. And I'm also going to repeat a quarter of an inch cutting out the center that reduces the amount of fusible, which will reduce the stiffness and the fabric buildup behind the applique. Some areas, it's a little bit too small, so I'm not going to cut in there, but I have other areas in which I will cut that part out. Now, if you have a whole bunch of the same appliques to cut out, this is a sneaky little trick for you. Staple right along the drawn lines so that they get held together and then cut out all at once, quarter inch around. That'll speed up the process. If you have small pieces that don't need any interiors cut out, group them together all on one piece, and then fuse that down and trim them out. At My design is gonna be using this plaid fabric for the deer head, and I wanna do some fussy cutting. I have several deer head that I'm doing, and I want them to all look identical. So what I've done is I've made a couple marks on my pattern so that when I take this over to be fused, I can line it up with lines on the fabric. And then I know that all of my heads are going to look the same. I have a tutorial on the blog, quiltfabrication.com, called Creating Identical Fussy Cut Fusible Pieces. You might want to check that out if you need a little bit more help on making marks and getting pieces fussy cut. I've got my fabric and my fusible shape all set to go. I've lined up my little marks here at the top of the black. I'm striving to try to get some black on his nose so I don't have to use those other little pieces. And I'm going to follow the manufacturer's instructions for fusing this down. We're going to go real slowly, pressing about three seconds. It doesn't require much. You don't want to overdo this because you will melt your glue. and You won't have anything left to fuse down on the other side. So it just needs enough to tack it down, but not too much. There we go. That's pretty good. All right, I'm going to start cutting him out. I'm going to start on the side so I can get him free of this big chunk of fabric. I'm just going to cut along on the lines. I'll come back and take that spot out in just a bit. Right now I want to free him up. Looking good. So now my applique is ready to go on a background. So a couple tricks about backgrounds. I tend to cut mine a half an inch bigger all the way around. The reason is, is once you get that applique fused down and you do all the stitching, you'll find that your block has shrunk. So it's easier to make it oversized to begin with and then trim it down to size once all of the stitching is done. Now, how are we going to figure out where to place this guy? The first is to use a light box. I don't have one to demonstrate right now, but all you need to do is slip your pattern underneath, put your block on top, and lay it where it goes according to the drawing showing through. Next option is you can always make fold marks on your background. 
So you fold it in half and you just need fold marks right at the edges. You don't need it all the way across. You do it in both directions and that will tell you where the center is. All right. For my project, centering lines don't quite help me. But what I do know is I need to have his antlers a certain distance off of the edge. But before checking that, don't forget to remove the paper on the back. Here's a trick. If you're having trouble getting hold of the paper, use a pin to scrape it. And that way, you can grab it and peel it off. And now we're ready to place them again. So let's see, three quarters and a half an inch and lining up at the bottom. That looks pretty good there, and that looks pretty good there. All right, now comes the important part. Follow manufacturer's instructions for fusing him down. My manufacturer for fusible says that I need a damp press cloth and that I need to press for approximately 10 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and cover them up and get that process done. Ta-da! Doesn't he look cute? Okay, so now comes the stitching of our applique. I'm using a buttonhole stitch. I have my stitch length set at 1.5 and my stitch width at 2.5. Um, that's just what I prefer. I suggest that you try different settings and make sure that your tension is right on scrap fabric before you start stitching on your actual project. So I've gotten a little bit of a start here and we're just gonna continue stitching on the edge. to stop with my needle down for doing any turns. In this case I'm going to turn slightly. We'll get a stitch into his neck. Let's turn again. Yes I'm a little off but that is okay. This is not a show quilt. to try and turn on the straightaways and not the upswing into the applique. I'm going to take one little stitch into the corner here. get to a point you have two choices you can either continue as is and try to turn at the point or you can shorten your stitch length it's your choice I prefer to just kind of go into the point and see what comes out I'm going to stop there I'm going to turn. I have one more stitch this time I'm going to go this way and we'll see where I end up with that that's better. I like that better. And then I can continue. Okay, my little deer is all stitched up and he's almost ready to go. The last thing we need to do is to trim out the excess fabric in the back. Now I have a line of feasible along the line, the bottom down here, so I can't get in that way. So I'm going to pull the two pieces of fabric apart, like so, and make a little snip just to get my scissor in there. And then I am going to work my way around the edge. Being careful not to catch the fabric on the front. 
And you can tell where your fusible is. And there, we've just reduced some of the bulk on the front. I'm not going to bother cutting these out. and They're rather narrow. I'll just let them go. And he's done and ready to go. Thanks for watching. Thank you.